Hey everyone, thank you for watching Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace and this is Dr. Ian O'Neill, astrophysicist and our guest for this week. We're talking about aliens, which is awesome. And last episode we talked about whether we're alone. This episode we're talking about whether, well, why we haven't found them yet. If we're not alone, yeah. where the heck are all the aliens? Yeah, why haven't we found them yet? That's what I mean, I we are know. looking. I mean, it's not as if we're not looking. Okay, so we're looking. Yeah, so we briefly touched already on the Fermi paradox, which yeah. you know asks, you know, if there's all these transmitting aliens, where are they? You know, they should be, you know, talking to us right now. We should be talking to them. Right. But we don't take into account like the scale of space or whatever. But there's some ideas as to how advanced these aliens may be. So and if there are aliens, how how technologically advanced they are, or like how good they are at running like what do you mean by advanced technologically like, advanced so how much energy they use and this oh, is all okay. based on like the kardashev scale okay which is takes into account type one civilizations which are basically aliens that have found a way of using all the energy that their their planet produces and what falls on that planet so like solar energy Renewable energy. Everything energy. Is what about found like fossil fuels and stuff? Does that count? No. No, oh. that's, that's what we, that's we kind that's of That's bad energy. With. Yeah, no, that's, that's rubbish stuff. So basically all the energy that falls upon a planet they're able to harness. Now, if you put that in terms of um, an alien race that's able to do it, they're, they're at uh, type, well, they're a type 1 civilization. Type 1. But guess what we are? We're 0.7. We're not even there we're yet, obviously. Point seven we're 0.7 on the Kardashev scale. So we suck. Not even a point one. Not even a type 1. We, we suck. What's type 2? Yeah, type two. So basically a type two civilization is even more advanced than that. They're able to take all the energy that's um, that comes out of their star. Okay. So they're able to somehow harness all that energy that oh, comes I out of the star. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, The yeah. Dyson Sphere? Oh, the Dyson Sphere. The coolest sphere. thing Dyson ever? Dyson Sphere would be awesome if you watched oh, um, you know, Star Dyson Trek. You've sphere. actually seen seen one of those one of those things in action. A Dyson Sphere is a thing where you put a, a giant machine around a star and you suck all of the energy out of it. Yeah, right? it's crazy. Or capture it all. It's really. crazy cool. And uh, later on, we're going to quickly discuss how you might be able to find those. Ooh. Like now. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> like, just look that's in space. Okay, okay. Um, and then you got the Type 3, which is just just really crazy. They're able, to they're able to absorb all the energy that's produced from the entire galaxy, like using lots and lots of Dyson spheres. They're able to pull energy from the central black hole, all this crazy stuff. Wow. So um, th this is very science fiction ideas, but then again, if you follow logic of how our civilization's going, perhaps we may make it to type one in the next couple hundred years. Okay, so like a couple hundred years will be, we'll be on the scale. <laughs> we'll, we'll get we're, there. We're we'll not get on there the someday. scale right now. So if you calculate with the Drake equation and you include the amount of time it takes societies to develop uh, the Drake equation we talked about earlier, there are a thousand type three Kardashev scale civilizations in the universe. A thousand. That's quite a lot. That seems like a lot. But it's a big universe. And some of them have had a billion years for a head start because planets have existed since very quick after the Big Bang. Surprisingly quick, actually. New research has shown, right? Is yeah, that yeah. No, totally right. Yeah it's, yeah. it's like, you know, planets pop up soon after the stars produce. So. Right. Yep. So let's think about that. If you had a billion years, you'd definitely be type three. And so why haven't type three civilizations colonized all of the universe already? Where are they all? Well, they're probably working on it, but universe is really big so it's like it takes a long time for their signals to reach us so we could be surrounded by them we could have some very noisy neighbors but we don't know about it because huh. i mean if you just imagine the scale of our universe our, our, our galaxy a hundred thousand light years across it would take a hundred thousand years for one photon to travel from one end of our galaxy to the other I mean, we've only been listening out for these alien civilizations for the last 50 years. So we only know about this tiny little neighborhood in our little part of the galaxy. It seems really sad when you put it that way. And it our is. galaxy is just one of lots and lots of galaxies, and it's taken that, it would take 100,000 years for that? I mean, sure. So we've been listening for a few decades, and we've only even been like a civilization for like 50,000 years. Yeah. So that, uh, that little photon's only about halfway. It is. That's and just imagine what's come and gone in that time. Man. All the civilizations that have come and gone. So it could be that they're out there, but they're either too far away, and other options maybe like, maybe they don't like us. Maybe we suck. Maybe we don't even recognize them. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they, could be, they could be sitting on our doorstep. We could be looking at some sort of cosmological phenomenon and going, what the hell is that? Well, it's an intelligent alien civilization, could be a type but we three don't. And we just don't get we it. don't recognize it. As okay. Such, no. well, it could be ants. You know, maybe, ants trying yeah. to contemplate oh, humans. Maybe it's like I mean, the prime directive. Yeah. Where it's like you're not even type one, bro. I'm not gonna talk. I'm not talking to you yet. Yeah. Or wait, we wait. could just be like germs, and they just come. You know, walk even, on by, and they don't huh. even know we're there. 
There's also the assumption of exploration. Like, we look at aliens and we're trying to mm -hmm. think about them in the way that we think of ourselves, which is natural. I mean, we're very human-centric. Mm -hmm. And we explore things, but maybe not every alien race would be inclined to do so. And you got to think, you know... Maybe that, they're introverts. Uh, and intelligence doesn't only go for humans. I mean, look on Earth. You know, we consider dolphins to be extremely intelligent creatures. They have their own society groups, and we do consider them intelligent. The universe could be scattered with these very meek life forms. They are intelligent, but they're just not technologically endowed. And yeah. they, and as you say, they may not want to explore. They may, right. That may not be part of their genetic makeup. It could just be a human thing. So if we send Voyager 1 out in the 70s, and it's only just gotten out of our solar system, then the furthest we've been able to listen is only the last few decades, then of course I can see why we would think we were alone. You know, it's like mm -hmm. standing on the beach of a deserted island, throwing a bottle in the water, and then coming back ten minutes later expecting someone found it. Exactly. Like exactly. there's, it's just no way. I mean, we it's going to haven't been listening long enough. And at its current speed, a Voyager would reach the nearest star, which is only what four light years away, in fifty thousand years' time. So that's pretty slow. We, we got an issue with interstellar travel. We need to really need to, speed that up. We need to think about that. So if we were seeking out like the signs of a super advanced civilization. So looking for something type two or type three. Mm -hmm. So we would start looking for Dyson spheres. How do we, how do, we do that? How do we look for those? Well, it's kind of cool because if you think about it, um, a Dyson sphere would kind of cover the entire star. Right. So if you could take a look at a disk of a galaxy, perhaps not in our own, own galaxy, I suppose you could do it in our own galaxy, but if you looked in, a, in another galaxy and you looked for areas where there are infrared blotches but there is no associated optical light, hmm. you could think, okay, well, that could be a star encased inside like a megastructure like a Dyson sphere. So it's emitting like this heat, this glow. Yeah. But the light is blocked. So, uh -huh. and there are actually surveys looking for these magic mega engineering projects, which I just think is phenomenal. Did they find any yet? No, 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 no. Oh, come no, on. Yeah. We're working on it. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love it. There's also, uh, I see you put in, in our notes here, the weird light curve of a transiting planet <gasps> could give it away. So cool. A transiting planet, by the way, is when a planet passes in front of a star and you can see the planet's shadow, I guess, sort of, and also yeah. stuff coming off of its atmosphere. Yeah, you can see a silhouette. So, um, if you so like um, the, uh, the the Kepler Space Telescope looks for these light curves. So basically, you're looking for exoplanets passing in front of the disk of their star, and so you get this dimming effect. So you're looking at the star, and it slightly dims. It's like, okay, that's strange, and it does it again, and it does it again in a certain period. Therefore, you you know that it's a planet orbiting, mm -hmm. but when you analyze the light curve, you can understand the planet's size. You can also look for its atmosphere, which is another cool thing you can do. Um, but also, say if it's not a regular sphere. Say if, like a square, like a Bohr cube, passed in oh, front of the stop star. stop it. Looking at that light curve, you can detect that. That's awesome. So just imagine if an alien has built this planet-sized space death station box. which isn't i mean obviously most space stations you think about it be like the death star yeah, they yeah. would probably be it's not a moon it would probably be circular yeah, yeah it's definitely not a moon. space station yeah definitely a space station yeah um so say if it's a an irregular shape so like oh. a square or triangle and you can, tell you can detect it huh. and then uh what about the atmospheric content so if they had say mm. chemicals in their atmosphere could we tell that from afar and, absolutely yeah and then be like oh there's a civilization there and they're Industrial level because yeah. they have a lot of carbon in their atmosphere. Yeah, something. through um, through spectroscopy, you can work out you know what contents they got. So, say if it's a nitrogen rich atmosphere, not not so similar to Earth, that'd be awesome. You'd be able to look for oxygen. We don't have the ability to do this yet, but say if you discovered something weird in the atmosphere, like CSCs, chlorofluorocarbons, which are associated with um, industry on Earth. There's no natural mechanism to produce CFCs in the universe that we know of. Hmm. If you see that in an atmosphere, aliens, crazy stuff. Not saying that's, aliens. That's, that's when you start but it's thinking, aliens. yeah. So there are other things too. Like again, we're looking very human centric. Sure. And maybe it, Carl Sagan said maybe it takes aliens 12 years to say hello. We haven't really been looking long enough for stuff like that. So there are no. all these other considerations as well. So let's assume that we do find aliens. What are they going to look like? I don't know either. You're going to have to come back and find out tomorrow for that. Check out our yesterday's episode on whether we are alone. And make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus every single day. And uh, thank you very much, Ian, for coming and hanging out with us. Thanks, Trace, for having me. Yay.
aliens. <laughs>